Alright guys, welcome back to Total Extreme Wrestling 2016, this is the WWE 2018 playthrough, it is the third episode and it's going to be the second Monday Night Raw. If you can remember last week's Raw, it was absolutely garbage, a 61C rating and we need a lot better than that man. Or we might be, as Vince McMahon would say, you're fired. Uh, we've got Liv Morgan here on the left. She's replaced Alexa Bliss, so let me know out of the two who you prefer. Personally, I would take them both. Um, nice freeway triple threat action there, but let me know down below. Vote for who you think, um, not the, no one cares about how, how they fucking wrestle. Vote below who you think is the better looking. Is it Liv Morgan or is it Alexa Bliss? Now, just before we get into the show, some notable other factors here. Renee Young failed a drug test. I gave her a verbal warning. Apparently, she reacted badly to that, and something said, uh, said something about she is more likely to do drugs now because I gave her a fair warning. Perhaps I should have been more strict on her. I don't know. Then Michael Hayes had a poker tournament. Apparently that's helped the morale backstage. So that can only be good news. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get into the show. Don't I waste any more time. I think I've wrote a much better show this week. I'm anticipating at least a mid-70s at the lowest. We've wrote in a lot more storylines. We've got the return of Brock Lesnar, we've got the return of Stephanie McMahon and those big titties. What the hell could possibly go wrong? Alright, so here we go. We've booked 36 segments, taking 185 minutes. So we're using the maximum time we're allowed here. Uh, I used 31 minutes of pre-show time and didn't decide to do a post-show because, like I said, I don't believe in post-shows. I think the, the main event, the final segment, should be the last thing you see. So, fuck the post shows. Right, let's get into the show. Let's see what we can do. Like I says, I'm expecting something really good here. If I don't get it, then fuck, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might have to, I don't know, I might have to like call fucking um, Dave Meltzer and get his 200 years of wrestling uh, Marxism knowledge and see if he can help me out. Anyway, first pre-show bout and I matched at Terrible Wrestling and Non-Existent Crowd Heap. Offers a pain, defeated Grand Metallic and Lince Dorado in 8.16 when Akam defeated Lince Dorado by submission. It's got 39D minus. Really, just needed a team to put against the offer of pain. I seen two guys in a mask and I thought, well, why the fuck not? <laughs> so there you go. Me disrespecting the, ma uh, the masks, perhaps, who knows. Paul Ellering did some good work at ringside. Mm, Grand Metallic was really off his game. Lince Dorado not suited to his gimmick. Um, Offers of Pain did 43 and 48, Dorado did 32 and 39, not good there. Any worker improvements, Lince Dorado's improving rumble skills, Akam is improving in performance skills. Right, let's move on to the second match in a pre-show bout that's subpar wrestling in Little Heat. Bobby Roode defeated Kurt Hawkins in 9.22 by pinfall of a Roode bomb. It's got his 58C minus, not bad. Bobby Roode's not as suited to his gimmick. I think we need to turn Bobby Roode heel. I really believe that. Kurt Hawkins seemed off his game. Bobby Roode and Kurt Hawkins have pretty good chemistry at lifted the match. Bobby Roode had an in-ring performance of 68. Kurt Hawkins only 35. But again, pre-show. Doesn't really matter. Good that they have chemistry, but I do think we need to change uh, Bobby Roode's um, to a heel because he's just not really the best face, is he right? And then the main event of the pre-show... In a pre-show about the terrible wrestling and non-existent crowd heap, Ember Moon defeated Alicia Fox in 7.43 by pinfall. With a top rope stunner, it's got a 40 d main. It's not good. I'm trying to build Ember Moon a little bit up before I start using her. I mean, there's nowhere for her to go, really. We've got the Ronda Rousey and Nia Jax competing for the number one contendership. So, really, we've got Bailey and Sasha... Um, there's just nowhere for Ember Moon really on the main roster at the moment, so I'm just trying to give her wins on the pre-show. Uh, then uh, uh, Alicia Fox is not suited to her gimmick. Announcing quality helped. Ingram performances are 36 and 39. Not great. Anyway, let's move on to the main show. None of this shit really matters. Just the pre-show stuff. This is when we need to produce the good ratings. Hopefully we get them, and I think we will get them, so let's go. So we kick off Raw with a recap of last week's main event showing Bobby Lashley defeating Roman Reigns due to outside interference from Drew McIntyre. Lashley celebrates knowing he will be heading to SummerSlam to challenge Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship. It's got a 62 C rating. Not great, but it's not really the opening. It's just kind of the opening high package, so I'm not too worried about the 62 C. Let's move on. 
So we've got the camera cuts to the parking lot where our limo is pulling up. It's Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie has arrived at Monday Night Raw. She will referee the number one contenders match tonight between Ronda Rousey and Nia Jax. It's got 75p, so basically Stephanie McMahon just getting out the back seat of a limo. And that got 75b, solid rating, very good. Moving on. And we have Donut, Donut, Donut. It's Roman Reigns, man. Roman Reigns' music plays. He makes his way down to the ring. The Big Dog talks about how last week he had an opportunity to once again challenge Brock Lesnar for the 10 millionth time for the WWE Championship by defeating Bobby Lashley. Reigns says Lashley was putting up a good fight until a certain intruder stepped into his yard. Roman calls that intruder a stupid bitch and asks the same dog to come into his yard again, and he'll put him down. So lots of dog talk, uh, lots, of, lots of yard talk, your generic Roman Reigns promo, 67C+. Roman Reigns struggled when going off strip, script. Ah, uh, my God, this is pish. I wanted to script Roman Reigns, but he was unhappy. I don't think he was happy last week that I scripted him, and I don't think he was happy about... You know, job until Lashley last week either. He's been pretty furious about it, to be honest. So I thought, fuck it. We'll let him go unscripted tonight in his segments. And it looks like he struggled. So thanks, Roman, for repaying me with the faith that I actually did not have in you. But I, you know, I decided to have anyway. The announcing quality lifted the segment. Covered commentary gave the match a boost. And the angle got the crowd hotter. So, I don't know. Decent start, I guess. Let's move on. An angle featuring Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. So... It's, um, burn it down, all, all the, you know, all the marks in the uh, crowd are going mental. Our boyfriend, Seth Rollins, is making his way to the ring. So it's not Drew McIntyre, but instead Reigns' former tag team partner, Steph Rollins. Rollins thanks Reigns for helping him from a 2 one beatdown last week and says he has his back. However, regarding the night, he has unfinished, with, uh, unfinished business with Drew McIntyre. And if anyone is going one-on-one with the Scotsman, it's him. It's got an A, B rating. Rollins has suited to his gimmick. Rollins worked the crowd well, using the freedom to improvise his advantage. This angle got the crowd hotter, so there you go, man. Massive difference in the rating, just with uh, Seth Rollins coming out. Perhaps people love the shield, I don't know. If they like the shield, we might have to <laughs> try and just try and keep these two together, put them in every segment to try and get an ATB. Right, next. And it's Angle. So, Angle's came out. I don't have a clue what has happened here, but, um... For some reason, there's no text. Like, what the fuck? But Angle come down basically um, saying that, hey, you know, you suck, you suck, and all that crap. And he, he's came out and he says that, obviously, he can't give them both a one-on-one match with Drew McIntyre, but he can do the next best thing, and he can give them a tag team match. So it's going to be Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns against the team of Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. It's got a 77B rating. I just don't know what happened to the commentary, man. Amazing shit there. Cut and go improvise well for the segment. Seth Rollins is not stood to his gimmick, which is kind of worrying to hear. But at least he's actually getting good ratings. And he's not stood to his gimmick. So hopefully we can change him to a gimmick he is stood to. We can get even better ratings. Anyway, after that, up next we have an angle featuring the Riot Squad. They're backstage, you know, kind of intimidating staff on their way to the uh, the ring. And they're coming up next, and this got a 31 E+. Plus. Fucking awful. Ruby Riot, not suited to her gimmick. Liv Morgan is not suited to her gimmick. I'll need to handle. We'll have a look at them after the show here. Ah, talk about a rating killer, man. 31 E+. Plus. Moving on. Bailey versus Sarah Logan. And about that subpar wrestling and Little Heat, Sarah Logan defeated Bailey in 737 by pinfall with a fast roll-up. This got a 37 D-. minus. The announcing quality left at the match. Colour commentary gave the match a boost. The match was poorly placed. The crowd were already hot and didn't need working. That's my fault. Bailey had an in-ring performance of 48. Sarah Logan 41. And the relationships problem storyline has its fans with this segment. So after the match we have the Riot Squad. Um, it says Bailey is celebrating her victory even though she lost. So Bailey is not celebrating her victory. But so we'll just fucking try and... Forget about that. Won't let me delete it, but screw it. Bailey is on the floor, I don't know, complaining about how she lost or wondering how she lost. And the riot squad are coming in, beating but down Bailey to the mat. Um, more shit here about gimmicks. 
more storyline advancements, another poor, piss poor rating, 35A+. What the hell? Moving on, and it's the boss, so Sasha, after the match, the Riot Squad beat down Bailey. Moments later, Sasha Banks runs down to make the save. The Riot Squad make their way up the ramp Well, in the ring. Sasha helps Bailey back to her feet. That's got a 38D-. Uh, again, storyline problem, and story uh, relationships problem, storyline has advanced, and just Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan not suit it to their gimmick. 38D-. minus. These women have really killed off the show. We got off to a really strong start. And they fucked things up, so now that they're out of the way, let's see if we can move on and start improving this rating. So, Stephanie McMahon is making her way towards her office. She goes to push open the door and a hang, a hang, a hang, fucking hell, a hand grabs onto the handle, preventing it from opening. It's Ronda Rousey, man, who would I, who would I guess it, Rowdy, Ronda Rousey. Uh, both women stare each other down for Ronda asks Steph... How the arm is. Steph replies it's getting better. Besides, she is indestructible as she is a McMahon. Rhonda warns Steph that she better, call, uh, she better call tonight's match down the middle because she has another arm and Rhonda is not afraid to break it. Stephanie tells Rhonda instead of worrying about an impartial referee, perhaps she should worry about the £300 Nia Jax. That's got a 67 C rating. Um, I've got no issue with the 67C rating, I can't argue that. What I will argue is the fact that, say Nia Jax here, is £300, she looks about 4 450 500 maybe even 600 a couple of cheeseburgers short of £700, so I think that weight there could be wrong, but we won't complain about it too much. Anyway, let's move on, 67C rating, happy with that. Um, the B team are in a line backstage, waiting to use a coffee machine. They tell the person in front to hurry up because they have a match next and ask if he knows who they are. And then we have a, a quote from someone behind the B team in the queue. Curtis and Bo. My name is Paul Heyman. So the camera pans it a little and reveals that Paul Heyman is behind the B team. He asks them do they know who his client is and, hi, that, and that his client will be pissed off if he has to wait much longer for his coffee. The unknown guy at the machine drops his coffee in fear, so basically the coffee splatters all around him. He spills it over himself. The B team make way for Heyman and decide just to head to the ring. And Heyman walks up, skips the entire queue and gets Brock Lesnar a coffee. It's got a 59C, C, which is no bad. Bo Dallas struggled slightly because others weren't following a script. Paul Heyman improvised well through the segment. This is the only thing, that, so I let Paul Heyman go unscripted all the time, which is fine. But the only thing that is bad about that is if I'm if Paul Heyman's unscripted, then the people in the segment don't know how Paul Heyman's going to react. Therefore, they don't know how they can't script and how to react if they don't know what they're going to need to react to. So, I think probably with segments from now on, I might let either let everybody in the segment go unscripted or let everybody go scripted. You know, when you have someone scripted and someone unscripted, it kind of does confuse things. So, I don't know. That's what I'm making from that. But a 59 CV, not bad. Up next, we have in a poor match, Matt Hardy defeating Bo Dallas in 624 by pinfall for Twist of Fate. 53 C minus. Uh, Bo Dallas has a realistic-based gimmick. It's not suited to comedy debuts. The match did its job and gave the crowd a breather. Matt Hardy had an in-ring performance of 60, Bo Dallas an in-ring performance of 36. And the, story, the B team to be deleted storyline has started with this segment. 53 C minutes, not too bad. Uh, after the match, Bray Wyatt exercises the um, deleter of Worlds rematch clause and challenges the B team to a title match at SummerSlam. Matt Hardy says at SummerSlam, the B team will be deleted. Bray Wyatt improvised well throughout the segment, a 69 C plus. Good. Getting back up there. Paul Heyman is delivering a coffee backstage to Brock when he comes across Bobby Lashley in the hallway. Lashley tells Heyman it will be a great honour to not only face but beat Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. Lashley suggests he watches the show tonight as he has a little preview of what's going to happen at SummerSlam. Lashley takes the coffee with him and he tells Paul he might want to get Brock something a little bit stronger. It's got, a, and talking about strong, it's got a very strong rating, 75 B minus, happy with that, considering it was just like a, you know, a backstage confrontation between Heyman and Lashley, Bo Bobby Lashley struggled a bit because other people weren't following a script, I just talked about this, 
a couple of segments ago, and now you see again, I might stop doing that, because obviously it, it's, it's struggling. I mean, Paul Heyman's great with a script, but people are obviously struggling to react to that. So, Paul Heyman, you seem to be cursing other people, because you're that good. You're making other people fucking struggle. Please stop it. Anyway, 75B minus. Great stuff. Let's move on. Jesus Christ. I mean, I have to. I hate using 205 Live, guys, but they're on the roster. They've got the title. I need to at least book one match a night, but it's it's always pish. In a terrible match, Cedric Alexander defeated TJP in 11 18 by pinfall with a kick to kill. Got a 45D rating. Have you noticed in real life how they stopped showing the 205 Live matches on Monday Night Raw? So even McMahon knows they're shite. Uh, maybe I need to do that gimmick and just try and... I don't know if I can bring back the actual 205 Live show and just transfer everybody to the show. I might see if I can do that, because this is just not working for me. Um, TGP is not suited to this gimmick. Cedric Alexander, 41 performance. TGP, 44. Announcing quality and colour comedy gave, gave the match a boost. Not great. No worker improvements. Let's move on. Less said about this match, the better. Up next, we've got Heyman returns to Lesnar's locker room. Brock wants to know what took him so long. Heyman seems a little uneasy. Brock asks where his coffee is. Brock tells Heyman to relax and that he looks like he's seen a ghost. Lesnar says it's only a cup of coffee and he'll get his own. So it's got a 73B minus. Brock Lesnar seems to think that Paul Heyman is, I don't know, maybe a bit worried or concerned over the fact that he hasn't got Lesnar's coffee. And... Lesnar says it's only a cup of coffee, don't worry about it, he'll get his own, but it appears that maybe Paul Heyman is more worried about Brock's uh, title reign and the fact that he has to face the destroyer, Bobby Lashley, at SummerSlam. Anyway, 73 B- rating, very good. Brock Lesnar clearly enjoyed having the freedom to go off script and performed well. Good rating. I mean, I knew having Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman on the show this week was instantly going to improve the show and get much better ratings, and so far that has been the case. So, what's this? Stay an angle featuring Kurt Angle. Oh, fucking hell, yes. 81B rating, holy crap. Anyway, what's this? But Stephanie Man has just finished getting in, getting changed into her referee outfit when, when Angle walks into her office. Kurt, have you ever heard of knocking Stephanie Man? I can't do that. I mean, I'm trying to do the, um, the, the 2000 Stephanie Man voice, but I just... Kurt, have you ever heard of knocking? Nah, it's just not going to work, is it? But anyway, Kurt, have you ever heard of knocking? Uh, I was just in the middle of getting changed, said Stephanie. Angle replies, come on, Steph. I was just, I was around in the Attitude Era. It isn't anything I haven't seen before. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I went all Stephanie Man and Kurt Angle seem to be a wee bit close in the Attitude Era. There's a few segments where they're perhaps having a freeway uh, love triangle with Triple H, if you remember. Stephanie Man gives Angle a death stare. Angle replies, okay, perhaps tonight isn't the night for jokes. This is, a, this is a very important night, and it doesn't get any more important than Ronda versus Naya. Are you sure this is a good idea? You and Ronda have history. Can you really call this down the middle? Last week it ended it controversially. That can't happen again. Stephanie replied, Well, perhaps I would need to be here, Kurt, if you could control the roster and do your job properly. This match needs a strong authority figure, and they don't get any stronger than Stephanie McMahon. Now get out of here before I slap you in the face. So there you go. We kind of started the segment with a little bit of comedy. And then we ended it with the, the, the same old Stephanie McMahon, you know, castrating every male worker on the roster, as she does. 81B rating. Kurt Angle worked the crowd well, using his freedom to improvise to his advantage. Stephanie McMahon improvised well through the segment. And 81B rating. Fantastic, man. Let's move on. Definitely a much better show tonight. Brock Lesnar, Stephanie Mann and Paul Heyman. I think we need to make it that they're on the show every night because they're, they're definitely helping this show. But we haven't seen the final rating yet, so I don't want to get you know too carried away. Anyway, up next, another match. Bobby Lashley versus Mojo Rawley. In a poor match, Bobby Lashley defeated Mojo Rawley in 5.31 by submission with a Dragon Sleeper. It's got a 49D plus well. Um, Paul Heyman, I don't know if he's going to be concerned about um, the match against uh, Lesnar, but he certainly won't be concerned about the, in terms of the ratings that Lashley's doing. A 49D plus isn't impressing anybody. Uh, the color commentary gave the match a boost. But Lashley had an in-ring performance of 63, Mojo Rawley 35. Let's move on then. The matches so far letting this show down big time. 
I think we've had three matches and they've all been gash. So, <laughs> you know, no, we've had four matches and none of them's been good. I think the best we've had is like a... I don't even think we've had a match above the 60s, which is fucking awful. But anyway, let's move on. So Lesnar returns to his locker room with his coffee and asks Heyman what the hell is wrong with him. Heyman asks Lesnar if he just seen what happened. Obviously, Heyman is referring to the uh, dominating style of Bobby Lashley defeating Mojo Rawley. Lesnar tells Heyman he doesn't care about what just happened. All he cares about is collecting his money and getting out of here. So Paul Heyman, obviously a bit worried, a bit concerned about Bobby Lashley, especially after seeing his match. And Brock Lesnar didn't even watch the match. Too busy, you know, fucking getting a cup of coffee and he doesn't watch it, so he doesn't care. He just turns up to get paid then wants to leave. Again, another really good rating, 81B. Paul Heyman worked the crowd well, using the freedom to improvise to his advantage. Brock Lesnar did not do well without a script to follow this time, so Brock Lesnar did well last time without a script, this time he didn't do well. Strange how things go, different segments, different ratings, different outcomes, you know, not to worry about that. 81B, that's the main thing. Up next, Kevin Owens enters the GM's office, Cut Angle asks him if he's ready to compete. Owens holds on to his casted arm, so... Owens his arm still in a cast after Extreme Rules and says no, but he'll be ready for SummerSlam. Speaking of SummerSlam, Owen asks Kurt if he will get his match against Strowman for the Money in the Bank briefcase. Kurt says of course not, but is interrupted by Corbin who says he's already taken care of it and the match is official. Much to the surprise of Kurt Angle, Kevin says just because he can't compete doesn't mean Strowman shouldn't, hinting that he wants Strowman to compete again tonight. Kurt tells Owens not to worry about Braun, just worry about getting better for SummerSlam and slaps him on the arm, much to the pleasure of Owens and the pain, much to the displeasure and pain of Owens. So, um, basically, Corbin going behind Kurt Angle's back, somehow making the match official that Kevin Owens will be taking on Braun Strowman at SummerSlam with the Money in the Bank briefcase on the line. And uh, Angle doesn't seem too happy about this, and then slaps Owens on the arm as he's leaving. A 77B, another very good rating. Segments have been on point tonight. Let's move on. My god, fifth match of the night, and it's shit again. And about that subpar wrestling, and Little Heat, Alexa Bliss defeated Dana Brooke in 729 by pinfall with a twist at Bliss. It's got a rating of a 50D+. Plus. Bliss having an England performance of 59, Dana Brooke 31. Worker improvements, Alexa Bliss is improving in performance skills. Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't know how the fuck these ratings are so bad. Right, next. Uh, so back in the GM's office, when Owens left, Kurt demands to know who gave Corbin the authority to book that match. Corbin phones, rings, and, t- and tells Kurt it was Stephanie McMahon who gave him the authority. Speaking of who, Corbin answers his phone, so... Stephanie McMahon gave Corbin the authority to make that match official with Kevin Owens and Strowman. And it looks like Stephanie McMahon is on the phone now to Clark, uh, Bo- uh, what the fuck, I forget his name, Baron Corbin. Kurt looks on at uh, Baron Corbin, Kurt P- Corbin. I mean, fucking well, Kurt Corbin had a lot more hair, but kind of sounds the same, Kurt Corbin. <laughs> right, anyway, Kurt looks on as Corbin has a, it's, it's a tongue twister, man, having these two in the segments. <laughs> anyway, as I said, let's move on. Kurt looks on as Corbin has a conversation with his boss. Corbin can be heard replying to Stephanie, Don't worry, I'll be there waiting. After the call, Angle asks what that was about. Corbin refuses to answer him and leaves. It's got a 66 C+. Yeah, decent rating. Not quite as good as the ratings we've had previously in some of these great segments tonight. But again, a 66 C+. We're not going to complain about that. Next... Oh, well, a little bit better. First match to break into the sea, uh, the 60s. And an extremely short match, Braun Strowman defeated Chad Gable by six, uh, 459 by pinfall of a standing triangle choke. Braun Strowman, is, Braun Strowman is not suited to his gimmick. Braun Strowman and Chad Gable have great chemistry and it showed in their performances. Strowman had an in-ring performance of 76, Chad Gable 60. Um, Kevin Owens was on commentary for this match. I don't know how that helped, if it helped at all. It doesn't appear the announcing quality was penalised for very low experience. Whether that's because Kevin Owens was on it, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, moving on to the next segment. Well, after the match, Owens tries to make his way to the back, but Strowman blocks his escape and delivers a reverse chokeslam to Owens in the ring. 
it's got a 75b minus uh, the raw money in the back so it has advanced again and gained heat uh, Braun Strowman is not suited to his gimmick. We'll have we'll need to check out these gimmicks, man, because a lot of people are getting this not suited to their gimmick nonsense. I don't know what that, why that is, but it's definitely something we need to look at. Anyway, another good rating, seventy-five B minus. Let's move on now. Um, we've got an angle with Brian Kendrick and Roman Reigns. So uh, the the Brian Kendrick is frantically knocking on Roman Reigns' locker room door. Roman answers, and Kendrick tells him that Rollins is being attacked by Sigler and McIntyre. Uh, Kendrick tells Roman to follow him. They run down the corridor. Kendrick points Reigns into the direction of the boiler room, and Reigns runs in to make the save. That's got a 59C. And it looks like the gullible big dog has been tricked. With Reigns inside, Sigler and McIntyre appear, quickly closing the door behind them and locking it with a chain. Reigns, after seemingly realizing he's been set up, tries to bang on the door to get out, but to no avail. Sigler jokes that. It is sort of true because later tonight, Rollins is going to get beat down 2 on 1 by himself and Drew. It's got a 67C+. Plus. The storyline has advanced. Yeah, good stuff. Roman Reigns got penalised for low morale. We need to have a look at that. Maybe I have to give that guy a bonus or something because he's just not happy. Especially with the booking last week. Don't know how I can make it up to him. Anyway, moving on. Fucking hell, talk about I was waiting. We needed a good match, and it looks like we finally got one. And about that good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, Jinder Mahal defeated Finn Balor in 1250 by pinfall with a Karaki Valley driver. It's got a 78 B, B rating. Uh, Finn Balor's not suited to his gimmick. The match got the crowd hotter. Balor we had an England performance of 77. Jinder Mahal, 67. Mahal goes over Balor clean. If you don't like it, then I don't know. Fuck off. Um, you know, Mahal is massive. He would kill Balor in real life. I can't, I'm not going to put Balor over guys that are like 10 feet tall. You know what I mean? Just not happening. But anyway, finally a good match tonight. And I'm sure that will definitely help with the rating. And we needed it. We really did need it. So really glad that we finally get a good match. Let's move on now. Uh, fucking hell. I think that's the best rating of the night. An 84B+. plus. So... The Beast is here. Brock Lesnar makes his way to the ring with his advocate, Paul Heyman. Heyman does his usual work on the microphone, building up his client and his upcoming match against Bobby Lashley. However, Heyman doesn't seem like his usual self. Brock grabs the microphone and tells everyone that Bobby Lashley is no different from Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. He's just the next name on a list who's had their ass kicked by Brock Lesnar. Lesnar struggled when going off script again. Dango got the crowd hotter though, and this got an 84B plus rating. Very good. Uh, worker improvements, not much there. Dirt sheet. Uh, yeah, 84, best rating of the night. Happy with that, man. Fantastic. Let's move on now. Uh, Alexa Bliss and Mickey James watch on backstage as we get ready for Nia Jackson Ronda Rousey. This got us 57C minus. And now, I believe it is the number one contender match between Ronda Rousey and Stephanie McMahon. It is Ronda Rousey versus Stephanie McMahon. No, it's Ronda Rousey versus Nia Jax, sorry. And in a bout that didn't have much heat in terrible wrestling, Nia Jax defeated Ronda Rousey in 10.47 by a fast counted pinfall from Stephanie McMahon. Well, surprise, surprise. That's got a 39D minus. Nia Jax was visibly tiring towards the... Well, fucking that fat bastard. That's the last time I trust her with a 10-minute match. Jesus Christ. If it was 10 minutes eating donuts, she'd be alright. But 10-minute match, and obviously it just cannot handle it. And the announcing quality lifted the match. Ronda Rousey in ring 40. Nia Jax in ring 43. The Ronda Rousey, Stephanie Man storyline has advanced segment... Uh, has advanced with a segment but lost heat. It's got a 39D minus. Fucking shogging. Ah, no worker improvements. We'll need to move on. So after the match, Stephanie gives Ronda, I just screwed you the fuck over, Luke. Quickly gets out of the ring and runs towards the back. Ronda tries to give chase but is blocked by Nia Jax. Ronda arm drags Nia Jax then puts puts her in an arm bar, momentarily making her tap and then running after Stephanie. So Ronda now... It's got past Nia Jax. She's given chase to Stephanie. Stephanie's already made her way out of the ringside area towards the back. Backstage, Stephanie is seen running towards the parking lot with her triple Ds bouncing all over the place. It's like two big ginormous bouncy castles 
just fucking flip and fl- fl- flying and flip flopping all over the joint. Her boobs are like two indie wrestlers having a high flying match in <laughs> in Ring of Honor or New Japan, man. They're, they're all over the joint, man. They're up and down, left and right, going all over the place. Uh, Baron Corbin sitting in the uh, sitting in a car waiting, to which Stephanie Man jumps in and tells him to drive. They make a getaway just before Rousey can catch up. A furious Rousey takes her frustrations out on a nearby car, pummeling the bonnet and denting it with her bare hands. So holy shit here. Stephanie Man made her exit, got backstage, you know, tits flying everywhere, managed to get backstage into the car park before getting caught by Ronda Rousey. She jumps in a car that was waiting on her, which was being driven by Baron Corbin, and Ronda Rousey just could not catch her in time, and... Holy shit, man. Interesting stuff there. Ronda Rousey then pummeling some poor person's car. A 61 rating. Would have preferred a slightly higher rating than that, but still, good stuff. Advances the storyline. Looking forward to see what happens with here, but looks like Stephanie Man getting one over on Ronda Rousey. Rousey may have beat her at WrestleMania, but Stephanie Man has screwed her out of a shot for the women's title at SummerSlam. So let's move on now. And it is the main event in a decent match. Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre defeated Seth Rollins in a handicap match in 1753 when Dolph Ziggler defeated Seth Rollins by pinfall with a super kick. In terms of ring work, Seth Rollins was head and shoulders above everyone else. Drew McIntyre was the weakest link, struggling to keep up with everyone else's performances in the ring. Seth is not suited to his gimmick. Seth had an in ring performance in 79. McIntyre 56, Sigler 68. The Shield vs. Sigler McIntyre storyline has advanced with this segment and gained heat. Anyway, 73B minus, very good. Moving on. After the match, Sigler and McIntyre continue to beat down Rollins, nailing him with fe- fe- uh, several finishers and leaving a lifeless body in the ring. This got a 65C rating. Um, backstage we have Kurt Angle uh, with the help of a few officials and they've got the boat cutters out and they're uh, trying to, desperately trying to get Roman Reigns out of the boiler room. They managed to cut the um, padlock so Roman Reigns finally getting out of the boiler room. He runs towards ringside. This got 74B minus. And by the time Reigns gets to ringside, Sigler and McIntyre are no longer there and Seth Rollins is being stretched out. And uh, Reigns watches on as his shield buddy is obviously injured, being taken to the back, needs medical help. And then Raw goes off the air with Roman Reigns looking very stale and Seth Rollins not being suited to his gimmick and a final rating of 73 B-. So, I don't know guys, what did you think of that show? I thought it was a lot better than last week's. I thought it was good, I thought there was lots of star power on the show, lots of good segments, a couple of good matches. I think it's going to be a much better rating. I'll be shocked if we're not in the 70s. But I am. Um, I need to see, man. The anticipation's killing me. So without further ado, let's go and check what we got. I take a, I take a low 70s. Just, I need to get in the 70s. Oh my god. Shitting me. 69C plus. That's, that's a joke, man. The general feeling is that WWE don't have enough interesting storylines going on. The show increased our popularity in three regions. The show lost its popularity in 18 regions. So, fuck, there you go. Joke. 69C+. Alright, anyway, just for relief, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll check some emails and we'll see how some of those matches rank in terms of the uh, top 100. But, disappointed with that Raw. I mean, overall, I thought it was a good draw. I'm happy with how I wrote it. I think a couple of the matches could have been better, I'll be honest. Maybe a couple of better matches would have got us a better rating. But I think a 69C plus is disappointing. I think we deserve better. Let me know what you think down below. So, in terms of mail, holy shit, man. Got quite a lot. Uh, Razor just doesn't get it, in my opinion. This guy thinks we should cut Razor. Who the fuck is this guy? He's a road agent. Never heard of him in my life. Seth Rollins' opinion. Mojo Raleigh, Mojo Raleigh is charismatic. I can see him doing well in the future. Okay. Drug test fees. 14 grand. Fucking brilliant. WWE got a Raw got a rating at 18.8. I think that's up for last week, which is good. You would expect that though with Lesnar and McMahon returning. Uh, Kurt Hawkins is complaining about recent booking has been poor. 
I mean, the guy's on like one of the biggest <laughs> losing streak ever. I mean, of course his momentum's going to be poor. Uh, Cedric Alexander's going to be a star, in my opinion. The kid is worth pushing hard. Says Braun Strowman. Um, Alexander Wolf isn't happy. EC3 wants to be called up. Kathy Kelly wants to be called up. I know all those messages are going to be about getting called up. So, um, yeah, there you go, man. Interesting. We've read all the messages as um, read. Mark them all as read. So, anyway, let's just have a quick look at a couple of things before we leave. My God, I mean, pressures are going to be on now. Smackdown to deliver. Especially after that. Like, it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't a pure raw, but it's not the rate we were expecting. We were, we're expecting a lot more than that, and it just didn't fucking deliver. So, what can you do, guys? What can you do? Um, so, in terms of the uh, top 100 shows, they see that WWE Raw moving into the top place. The first show to get a C. Plus. Still, though, not where we want to be. We want to be in the 70s. Sh- can we improve with SmackDown? I mean, Raw has went up 8 whole points. So if we can, if SmackDown can go up by eight points, then we'll we'll get a seventy-three. Obviously, it's not going to work like that. SmackDown doesn't quite have the stars that um, Raw has. At least I, I'm looking at these Raw ratings, and I can see how Raw can get better. Don't necessarily know if I have that feel with SmackDown. I think with SmackDown, we'll just need to try and focus on better matches. AJ Styles wasn't used much last week either, so perhaps we get him more involved, and that should help with things. But uh, yeah, there you go. So 69 C plus. That's the highest rated show we've done so far. But we're only three shows in, so nothing to be, you know, worrying too much about. But definitely would have preferred something a bit higher in terms of the matches. Jinder Mahal defeating Finn Balor. Apparently, it's the best match we've had in the three weeks. So that is a 78 B. Um, looking at the other ones here, Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre defeating. Seth Rollins in a handicap match was a 73 B minus as well. That also made uh, number six. Uh, Strowman defeating Cable, Gable 63. And so yeah, you can see there's some decent matches there. But the Mahal one and Finn Balor, the best one so far. The only one to get a B. The others were all B minuses. So doing not bad in terms of attendances. That row actually wasn't that good with the attendance. But the worst attendance. We've had that WWE show so far, but again, I mean, it could be due to a size of the arena, maybe the state that we're facing is not as popular as the state we were at previously, so we can't look too much into that. And, um, yeah, guys, so, I know, disappointing, but tonight we've got SmackDown Live, we can try and, you know, fucking make up for our problems. So, Roman Reigns, I'm going to give him a bonus, because he is pissed off, and we need to try and cheer the guy up, so... Let's see if we give him, give him, what we give him, a 20 grand bonus. I just don't want the guy to be pissed off. We'll give him 25, right? Because we need him, he's the big dog. We go, 25 grand bonus and very, so he's very happy at a 25 grand bonus, but he's still overall annoyed. Maybe we'll give him another bonus. We'll give him so it'll be fifty in total, and then we'll well surely that will cheer the guy up, man. If it doesn't, he's not getting any more money. I can tell you that. Range, you miserable bastard! Cheer up for fuck's sake, right? So here we go, twenty-five, and all twenty-five grand, and he's happy. Yes, only took us fifty k, but Roman Reigns is happy again. Um. Guess we could go through the entire list here and just see what people are like. So you got normal. I'm just gonna go through this quickly and we'll look out for the Bobby Lashley's pleased. I want what's what's better, pleased or happy? I'm not quite sure. Cut Hawkins irritate it. We'll maybe start pushing him a bit better. Got Dolph Ziggler's happy. Um normal, 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 normal. Everybody oh, who's angry here? Uh, Carl Anderson, we don't really give a shit about Carl Anderson if we're being honest. Uh, normal, normal, normal. Pleased. Pleased. Happy. Normal, normal, normal. Pleased. Angry? Who's angry? Seth Rollins? Oh my god, right. But he's, he's pleased his recent booking, but he's... I'll give him a fucking 25 grand bonus as well then. 
Oh man, see the shield, a bunch of bunch of bitches, man. Biggest pussies I've ever met in my life, man. Just NWO ripoffs. Boys against men, it really is, right? Twenty five grand. Still annoyed. I'm gonna have to give him fucking fifty, ain't I? Can't believe this. These guys are bloody killing me. The ratings are drying up and the money's drying up, man. It's just <laughs> not a good time here to be in charge of the WWE. Another 25 grand bonus, 15 total. Surely he's going to be happy. He is happy, thank God. Right. 100k just to cheer up those guys. Sin Cara's annoyed. Again, don't really care about Sin Cara. And that is it. So there you go. We've managed to fix the problem. Uh, we have a couple of things here that we need to change, perhaps with gimmicks. But we'll do that next time. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for Monday Night Raw. This is episode 3. I thought it was a good show. The rating, I don't think, was deserved. I think we deserved at least a mid-70s. We didn't get it. Let me know what you think and uh, give me some advice. Let me know what you think we should do to improve the ratings. And that is going to do it until now. Be back next time for SmackDown. It'll be episode 4 on the road to SummerSlam. And until next time, peace.